If you are new to deep learning, you might have stumbled upon optimizers. There is a wide variety of them, and each of these algorithms seems to be slightly different, but in non-obvious ways. You might be asking yourself right now, what exactly are optimizers in the context of deep learning? In today's short video, we'll answer that question. We'll first define, in simple terms, what are optimizers in deep learning and where do they sit in the overall architecture. We'll then take a look at one of the popular optimizers, gradient descent, and how it compared to another algorithm usually used together called backpropagation. Finally, we'll take a look at three quick examples of optimizer to see how they are structured. You'll see it's pretty simple. By the way, if you prefer reading, I got a few very cool articles on optimizer, especially of the gradient descent kind, in the description. Check them out. First, let's define in the context of deep learning what are optimizers. Here we have the VGG architecture composed of multiple layers. Let's assume that the network is trained to do image recognition tasks. The usual flow is first we'll pass an input image into the network. This input image activated neurons in the various layers sequentially. Then at the end, a label is given out of multiple class. In this case, it's classified as uh, the image as a potato. The parameters on how the network should respond to the input are stored in each of the sequential layers. When you first start to train, the parameters are very close to random and the, the network doesn't know much. It's mainly taking guesses. The role of the optimizer is to update these weights or parameters so that the network goes from random guess to accurate guesses. But how does an optimizer achieve that? One popular technique is to use the gradient descent algorithm. Gradient descent in machine learning is used to find the value of a function, parameter theta in this case, that minimize a cost function as much as possible. In a nutshell, it is finding how much the parameter should move to reduce the cost associated with making errors. To do so, it uses a gradient for each parameter and take the best immediate step called learning rate in whichever direction will reduce the error produced. There's many variants to that, but in a nutshell, this is what is happening. You can think of gradient descent as hacking down the error plane. There are other kinds of optimizers that are useful in different contexts in machine learning, like limited memory BFGS or simulated annealing. Just keep in mind that gradient descent isn't the only method available, but that it is the one you will most likely bump into the most. So, okay, now we know what the optimizer is supposed to do. We can just use gradient descent in the network and we are good, right? We just need to find the gradient or partial derivative of each parameters across layers. But how do we achieve that? The answer is backpropagation. We will check the high level overview of how the algorithm works. You'll see it's pretty simple. There's four steps. Step one, the error is calculating using the output label and what the ground truth actually is. Many error metrics exist here, which will have different impact on the learning procedure. Once the error is found, it is backpropagated across the layer. Then the gradient at each layer will be calculated by finding the partial derivative of the parameters with respect to the target cost function. There is multiple ways of calculating the partial derivative for deep neural network. You could technically do it by hand, but it's not practical for deeper network. So instead, modern the deep learning library build a computational graph of the network many parameters and how they interact together. Then using a set of technique called automatic differentiation, the backpropagation algorithm leverage the chain rule to get the partial derivative of any complicated formula. For PyTorch, the engine to do automatic differentiation is called Autograd. Anyway, in a nutshell, the full deep learning flow is the following forward pass of the input to generate an output, error is calculated on the output with the ground truth, backpropagation of error is enacted to get all the necessary gradient. Finally, the optimizers use these gradient to update these weight. Let's take a quick look at three flavor of optimizer based on gradient descent. By the way, I found two fantastic blog posts on gradient descent that are very, very complete. Check them out, they are in the description. All right, so, Gradient descent algorithm all work pretty much the same way, like I said. In the cost function plane, the algorithm is trying to find a minimum within its parameter dimension. The simplest form of gradient descent is stochastic gradient descent. In summary, using the gradient of the cost function for a single specific data point selected stochastically, the parameters are updated by taking a small step called learning rate or learning step in the downward direction. That's kind of all there is. If you add the momentum parameter, you take into consideration now the previous step you took multiplied by a tunable momentum parameter. 
This will make your optimization have some sort of initial momentum that goes on throughout, making the iteration move more like a ball down the cost plane. You can modify this still a bit more to have a momentum algorithm that can kind of look ahead while it's rolling and do a correction. And this is called Nesterov Accelerated Gradient. If you're interested by these algorithms, do check out my playlist on the subject. You will see they aren't that complicated and the important part is that they are all building upon each other. So we start with stochastic gradient descent and then you add momentum and then you add a bunch of stuff and then you end up with Adam and the current modern optimizers. So my suggestion for optimizer in general is always start with what the state of the art is using for your specific use case. Don't overcomplicate yourself with optimizer to start out. Yet. If you have some time during your deep learning project, do experiment with a bunch to check out how these optimizers change your model performance. And that's it. That's what the optimizers are. I hope this was useful. Don't forget to like the video if it was the case and leave a comment if you have any question. I'm here to help. Have a great week everyone and see you in the next video.